So in the previous video, we took a look at some techniques for creating a landscape through modeling. And then we added some plants and other objects to our scene using Maya's paint effects, including a custom tree that we had made in an earlier video. In this video, we'll take a look at some techniques for working with the textures in our landscape. So in the, in the previous video, we applied just this solid shader to uh, this environmental object here, as well as to this environmental object, our mountain in the background here. Uh, a couple different techniques that we could use, for instance. Let's go to the hyper shade and I will select the material that represents our foreground. And besides just applying color to it, we could also obviously apply a uh, image as a texture. So I'll click on the checkboard here, checkerboard, go to file, click on the folder, and I'll find my ground te uh, texture that I saved. And I'll say OK. Uh, now I could take this texture, which is a tileable texture, and and tile it and create my texture that way. Uh, besides applying an image as a texture, we have a couple other uh, alternatives which we'll take a look at now. Uh, I'm going to create a new material and I will apply it to my uh, foreground uh, terrain here. And now with my mesh selected, I'm going to go to this dropdown, go to rendering, texturing, 3D paint tool, and I will open up its tool settings. Now that I'm in here, I'll take a look at the attribute I wish to paint, which in this case is color, and I will say assign edit textures. I've already made some changes to the settings here earlier. Uh, I want my texture to be a large size, so I made it 2048 by 2048, and I'm going to save it as an in the image format of JPEG um, so that I can open it up maybe in Photoshop or some other uh, software if I wish to later on. I'm going, uh, going to now go to Assign Edit Texture, and now I can start painting directly on my mesh. Uh, I think the first thing I'll do is flood the uh, paint layer and uh, render it out and see what it looks like. And now I'll start painting on it. I can change the size of my brush either by adjusting the parameter here with the slider or using the B key and the left mouse button to change the size and flood it again. Uh, I think what I'll do is make the foreground a little darker than the background or maybe first I'll make the background a little lighter by flooding it again. Take a look at it. And now we'll take our foreground and perhaps darken it up a bit.
and we'll render it out to see how it looks. Notice that we're not actually seeing the change yet. Uh, what we need to do is to save the texture. And now if we re-render it, we'll see that the foreground is now darker than the background. Uh, before showing you the next technique uh, on my train, I'm going to show it to you on a simple polygon primitive. Uh, I'm going to create, in this case, a sphere. And once again, under rendering, I'm going to, well, first, first let me create a material for this. and apply it to my, my sphere here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Texturing 3D Paint Tool. As you can see, I cannot paint on it yet. That is because I need to assign Edit Texture, in this case, the color. Uh, I'll keep this 2048 by 2048 as we did with the previous example. And I'll assign, I can flood it. I can paint it, but the other technique I want to show you is how we can actually use the paint effect brushes uh, to also paint textures. So to do that, I'm going to click on this button here, and I'll select some of our paint effects brushes here. Uh, I think I'll try some of the grasses here. Uh, perhaps we can try this, uh, this one here. I'm going to take my brush and make it a little smaller. And I'll start painting on it. So the thing to understand about this is that we're not actually doing the paint effect brush uh, effects, but rather using it as a technique for painting textures. Notice that if I change the color, it will in fact also change the color that we paint on our object. I'm going to save the texture. It's prompting me to save the scene first, so I'll do that. And we can go ahead and try rendering it and seeing how this effect looks. I recommend trying lots of different brushes with this technique uh, and exploring it and seeing what you can do with it. So now that I'm back in my Maya scene with my environment, we'll go ahead and try those paint effect brushes as a means for creating textures. So I'll select my mesh again, go to texturing, 3D paint tool, and we'll select uh, once again one of these uh, grasses to paint a texture on our mesh here.
and we'll render it out to see how it looks. And um, finally, we'll take a look at another technique that we can use to create textures for our uh, landscape here. And for this example, we're going to change uh, the textures used for the mountain in the background. I'll go to my Hypershade, select the material, and uh, I don't think we'll start on color first. First, we'll play around a little bit with the bump mapping. I'll click on the checkerboard. This time, I'm not going to be using a file, uh, but I'll be using one of these procedural textures. And I think the one that we'll try will be this one, the simplex noise. Perhaps I'll bring down the uh, bump depth a little bit, make it a little more subtle. And then we'll go to the simplex noise properties here and see what we can do with them. There are a number of different noise types that we can apply, such as fractal, cellular, cellular and ridged. I'm going to go with ridged. We can increase and decrease the amplitude here. We can adjust the scale of, uh, of the noise. as well as a bunch of other properties. And as you can see, here's the effect that we're getting now. It gives the illusion of there being more modeling on the mountain than there actually uh, is. It also creates these nice ridges here. So I spent a little more time on my landscape here. Uh, I decided I didn't like the uh, texture that I had applied here. So instead, I decided uh, to put some paint effects, uh, grasses and flowers in my scene here in the foreground. Uh, I kept the uh, mid-ground and, and background uh, pretty simple as far as uh, the materials are concerned. Uh, if I play my scene here, you'll see that it has uh, wind applied to some of the grass as well as to the tree. And if I render it out, I get this. And finally, I also created a play blast to show the wind effect on the trees and grass. Thank you for watching and see you next time.